my 30-minute confession. This is a daily confession. It's about 30 minutes. You might want to try confessing it yourself. These are words from the Bible. These are Jesus words. These are promises that God has made. Jesus said my words are spirit and they're life to those that find them. Life, health, and peace. That's a good reason to confess it, don't you think? You need to be consistent. Speak it every day. Confessing this over yourself and your kinfolk, you're more readily able to receive God's word into your spirit by hearing it from your own voice than if you're hearing it from someone else. Not that that's ineffectual, because it does produce what you speak it to produce. But if you speak it over yourself, you'll find it uh, carries a lot more weight, generally speaking. Anyway, join me in speaking this confession then, or just listen along. Father in heaven, glory to your name. You are the creator and the king of the universe. You are the holy one, the almighty, and the ever-living one. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever. Blessing, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, and power, and might belong to you who sits upon the throne, and to the Lamb forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for your goodness and mercies. The Lord Jesus Christ saves all my house. We are joint heirs with him, given the nations. Father, all of your promises are yes and amen in him, unto your glory by us. We have eternal life and covenant peace with God in Christ Jesus. He blesses us to a thousand generations and makes us to be a blessing. He does not curse us. Christ in us is our hope of glory. He's our kinsman and redeemer, our cup and portion, our good inheritance, and our exceedingly great reward. We are the sons of God by the faith of Jesus Christ. We are crucified and risen with him. We are sanctified in the word of truth, established in his righteousness, given his mind, conformed to his image. We're a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. God has purchased us and redeemed us unto himself in his own blood. The peace of God in Christ Jesus rules continually in our hearts, acting as umpire, settling with finality all questions that arise in our minds. His peace sanctifies us, spirit, soul, and body. His blood purges our blood. Our souls are saved. Thank you, Father, for your covenant mercies to our house in Christ Jesus through his blood. The Lord delivers us from all our trials. He is a shield around us. We do not worry about anything. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, we make our request known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, umpires and guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. He bore and carried away our sin in his own body on the tree. Our sin is remitted. 
Now we do not let sin reign in our mortal bodies to work in our members, where the righteousness of God by the faith of Jesus Christ. We enter into the presence of God through his broken body, the veil. Crucified with Christ, we're set free of sin. Now we live and move and have our being in him. He bestows glory on us and lifts up our heads. Our faith is in Jesus' blood. He has delivered us from the wrath to come. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and chastised for our peace. He bore and carried away our disease and our weakness. By his wounds we are healed. Christ has freed us from the curse of the law and given us the blessings of Abraham. For it is written, Cursed is anyone who hangs on a tree, that as our years, so is our strength. The older you get, the stronger you get. Yes, that's a promise. That's scripture. Our eyes do not dim and our strength does not abate. With long life, he satisfies us and shows us his salvation. He restores our souls and delivers our lives from destruction. Our youth is renewed. We have perfect well-being, all essential good, all spiritual prosperity and freedom from all agitating passions, moral conflicts, and fears. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, has given us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Jesus fills us with the spirit of discernment and revelation knowledge of the Lord's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We are in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. His wisdom dwells with us in foresight so that we exercise sound judgment and find out knowledge of woody inventions. He gives us discernment and shows us new things, even things we had that had been hidden from us. The Lord reveals secrets and makes known to us what will come to pass. We know that the Lord who calls us by name is our God because he gives us the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. He gives us knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom and understanding in all visions and dreams. We commit our works to the Lord and our thoughts are founded. By understanding we are established. By wisdom our house is built. And by knowledge the rooms thereof are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Wisdom is like honey to our souls. Because we trust in the Lord, we are counted righteous, and our expectation and reward are not cut off. The Lord gives us inheritance for our children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for us. The Lord is our God. He gives us strength and we do great works in his name. We seek his kingdom and his righteousness first and everything we need is given to us. He gives us the abundant life. We communicate our faith effectively because we acknowledge every good thing which is in us in Christ Jesus. The Lord is our all in all. He blesses us and surrounds us with favor like a shield. The blessing of the Lord makes us rich, and he does not add sorrow to it. Because we love wisdom, the Lord causes us to inherit substance and fills our treasuries. In his name we freely receive his gifts, and we freely give. He came to give us life, and that more abundant. Glory to God who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. The Lord pours out more blessing on us than we have room to contain and restores the devoured years. His hand is with us so that our coasts are enlarged and evil stays away from us that we are not hurt by it. The Lord blesses us so that we become richer and richer, even very wealthy, because we're willing and obedient. We eat the good of the land. We eat the fat and drink the sweet. It's not enough to be obedient. 
you have to have a willing heart. He sets your hand to do something, and you may do it, but if you're not willing at it, you're not going to see these greater blessings. We eat the fat, we drink the sweet. The Lord supplies all our needs, exceeding abundantly far beyond all we can ask or even imagine by His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Sabbath rest and our delight. He is holy and we honor Him. We do not go our own way or find our own pleasures or speak our own words. We delight ourselves in the Lord and He causes us to ride upon the high places of the earth and feeds us with the heritage of Jacob our father. For he has spoken it out of his mouth. The Lord wishes above all things that we prosper and be in good health even as our souls prosper. Through faith and patience we obtain the promises. All our needs are abundantly supplied and we have an abundance for all good works. His plans for us are peace not disaster. He gives us long life, hope, and a future. All things are possible with those who trust in the Lord, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. Because we trust in the Lord, we are not ashamed. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us and keeping us, for making your face to shine upon us and being gracious to us. Thank you for lifting up your countenance upon us and giving us peace. Amen. Blessed be the Lord our God. He is good. His mercy endures forever. We are baptized in the Holy Spirit. We pray and sing in tongues with the interpretation. Rivers of living water flow from our midst. The battle and the victory belong to the Lord. Everything we set our hand to prospers. We are given power to obtain and ability to enjoy riches and wealth and to confirm the covenant and power to partake thereof and to enjoy our portion and our labor. As it was with our fathers, so it is with us this day. Our way is made prosperous. The Lord sends a blessing on everything we do. We have good success. He maintains our lots in the pleasant places and commands his blessing on us in all that we do. We become richer and richer, even very wealthy. We do not labor in vain nor bring forth for trouble, for we and our offspring are the blessed seed of the Lord. Jesus is the good shepherd. His yoke is light and easy to bear. Our souls rest in him. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. We come to the Father in Him. We dwell in the secret place of the Most High. He is our high tower, our fortress, our hiding place, our Lord and our God. We trust in His mercies. We abide in His shadow and under His wing. We're born of God and we have overcome the world and this is the victory, even our faith. He gives his angels charge over us. They keep us in all our ways. They are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for us. who shall be heirs of salvation. Jesus Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. A bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not extinguish. He does not allow us to be tested beyond what we are able to endure. And with every trial he makes a way of escape that we can bear it. We rest in the Lord and in his finished work at the cross. We abide in the Lord. Therefore, the wicked one does not touch us. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We submit to God. We resist the devil and he flees. And that word flee means to run in terror. The Lord is our habitation. He executes righteousness and judgment for all the oppressed. Jesus is above every name named. Every name. The ever-living one is our help. That's what that name means. We confess him and his words before man and he confesses us before the Father and his angels. 
Evil does not but fall. Its smilings do not come near our homes. We are established in righteousness far from oppression, for we do not fear, and terror does not come near us. We are not given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. The perfect love of God casts out all fear. Those who stir up strife against us fall for our sake. A thousand may fall at our side, even ten thousand on our right hand, but it does not come near us. No man can stand against us all the days of our lives. The Lord is with us and not with them that come against us. Every weapon fills that forms against us and we condemn every tongue that rises against us in judgment. This is our heritage in Christ Jesus, the servant of the Lord, and this is how he vindicates us. The Lord is our righteousness and our hope of glory. All our children are taught of the Lord and great is their peace. He answers us before we call, and while we yet speak, He hears us. We can do all things through Christ, who strengthens us. Jesus gives us favor with God and man. His grace and favor are multiplied to us in the correct personal knowledge of Him. We have perfect well-being, all essential good, all spiritual prosperity and freedom from agitating passions, moral conflicts and fears. We know the truth and the truth has made us free. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. We're born of God. We're the sons of God, led of the Spirit of God. We belong to Jesus. We hear His voice. We follow Him. We are strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Our spirit is the candle of the Lord, illumining all our inward parts. We are mature in Christ. We eat solid food. Our powers of discernment are trained by constant practice to know good from evil. His joy is our strength. His joy is filled with glory that cannot be described. He gives us a joyful heart and a good countenance. His hope is our anchor, His peace passes all understanding, and His love is beyond words. We abide in Jesus, whatever we ask the Father in His name, He does it, that the Father is glorified in Him. By Christ in us, we forgive those who have sinned against us, and ask the Lord to forgive them, and save them, and bless them with all His blessings. In His name we cast out devils, and bind and loose on earth what is bound and loosed in heaven. He gives us authority to tread on scorpions and vipers, snakes, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing harms us in any way. We have overcome Satan, the adversary, that wicked one, by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world by the blood of Jesus and the word of our testimony we're speaking the word now his words are spirit his words are life what are we testifying of the blood of Jesus that's where God's faith is operating the God kind of faith your faith needs to be in his blood and you need to be confessing that partake of his body and blood Confess your sin and partake of his body and blood. He'll bless you. It'll run the devil off. We confess, repent of, and renounce our sin and the sin of our ancestors. We partake of Jesus' body broken for us. The Bible says his body is the veil that was torn so that we could enter into the Holy of Holies. His broken body releases the sacrifice of His blood. And there is our salvation. Nothing else. No one else. His work. We partake of Jesus' body broken for us and His blood shed for the remission of our sins. Remembering His death on the tree. We come into the presence of God with praise and thanksgiving that we now share in His life, in this new covenant, in His blood, which redeems us unto God, gives us release from our sin debt, 
purges our consciences of dead works, all guilt and shame, all unrighteousness, and delivers us from spiritual death and from evils of every kind, internal and external, to serve the living God. We plead the blood of Jesus and receive our forgiveness, cleansing, healing, and deliverance. We plead the blood of Jesus against Satan and cast him from us in the name of Jesus. We confess, repent of, no, we confess, repent of, renounce, and ask forgiveness of, and break all contracts and curses. Right. Including individual, family, and generational that we and our ancestors or anyone else have made with the devil or any of his evil spirits or messengers or ministers in the name of Jesus we apply the blood of Jesus against all oppressors of our house we break every curse off of us and declare our complete deliverance from all evil we plead the blood of Jesus over us and our seed and all our kinfolk our homes and property, our labor, our churches and workplaces and schools, our conveyances, our in, uh, income sources and finances, our comings and goings, and our nations and leaders. We take authority over you, Satan. We bind you in Jesus' name. We take authority over all you evil spirits and ministers and messengers of Satan and break all contracts, curses, and works of Satan we have made, and we command all of you, come out of us, let go of us, be gone from us, and do not return in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We proclaim our complete deliverance and salvation in Jesus' name. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We love Jerusalem, and we prosper. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth, says the Lord. It does not return to me void. It accomplishes what I please and prospers in the thing for which I send it. We go out with joy and we're led out with peace. The mountains and hills break forth into singing before us and all the trees of the field clap their hands. Instead of the thorn, the cypress tree comes up, and instead of the briar, the myrtle tree comes up, and it is to the Lord for a name and an everlasting sign that shall never be cut off. James 5.16 says that the persistent, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. You can't find anybody to agree with you, Notice that this scripture is singular. The persistent, fervent prayer of a righteous man. One man. And Jesus is our righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Saying to them, As truly as I live, says the Lord, As truly as I live, says the Lord, As you have spoken in my ears, so I will do to you. God doesn't lie. Start speaking his word into his ear. That's what we're doing here. That's in Numbers 14, 28. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One, the Creator, Ask of me, ask me of things to come concerning my sons, and command me, command me concerning the work of my hands. Isaiah 45, 11. My circumstances change when I desire a new future more than my daily habits. We rejoice in the Lord and He gives us the desires of our hearts. It is written. Now you fill in what your heart desires. If it doesn't line up with the Word, it's probably not something the Lord wants you to have. But if you think it lines up with the word, submit it to God and he'll help you to understand uh, if it's for you or not. Some things are a given. By his wounds we are healed. He looks after our daily needs and so on. These things are given. Take every thought captive. 
order Satan away from you. Make Jesus Lord over that area of your life. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and you shall serve him only. Now, Father, forgive me. I have harbored ill toward people who have hurt me, and I have had unclean thoughts. I repent of it all. I confess my love for each of these in Christ Jesus. I forgive them, and I place them and myself in your hands, Jesus, and ask you to forgive us and fill us with your Holy Spirit and bless us with all your blessings. Amen.